Welcome to Cooking in Combo with Tip and Nick. Hey! <laughs> On this week's episode, we will be making a seafood feast. We're having a seafood feast. Yes. Feast, feast. Everything seafood. So we're going to have seafood chowder, um, broiled crab legs, garlic shrimp mashed potatoes, blackened fish, Brussels sprouts with bacon and Parmesan cheese. Drizzle mm. with a little bit of balsamic glaze. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for this. I am so ready. So we had our, obviously everybody knows how to make mashed potatoes, so that's why they're already done right here. Mm -hmm. um, we started our soup already, so we boiled the potatoes with some seasoning, the, uh, my favorite, bouillon. <laughs> bouillon. Little pet pet. <laughs> garlic, garlic powder, onion powder, and I think that's it. Oh no, some, some minced garlic as well. So we're gonna start off with that, and while that's boiling, we're gonna do some other stuff. Okay, let's get to it. <laughs> Before we start our soup, we are going to pop our um, crab legs in the oven so we, Put a little water bath in here some butter garlic and parsley so mm. we're gonna pop that in the oven for a little while and let that just steam so they're not they're not broiled they're steamed okay we're gonna pop this in the oven we're over here we're gonna start on our seafood chowder and like i said before we pre-boiled our potatoes with onions and um celery we have onion powder garlic powder pet pet and chicken bouillon in here that's what we started off with okay so now we are going to add in scallops. Some uh, claw meat for crab legs. Okay. So good. It's going to be so hearty. Yeah. The seafood chowder is really good. Okay. We have some salmon. Salmon that I pre-chopped. Just got pieces and then chopped them into little squares and dump that in there. And all the juices from um, your seafood is perfect to go in here to make it taste really seafood, okay? Add some corn. And this is frozen corn. How long does it simmer? Um, once the potatoes are done, you know, seafood doesn't take very long to cook. So it could simmer because you don't want everything to get like the, you know, shrimp or, oh, speaking of shrimp, <laughs> I need to grab some. Not all of this. We don't want our seafood to overcook. It can either become really tough or um, really like, what is it called? Not, where it like falls apart. Or that, that, you know that's when it's overcooked too. When it's, you think that it's real tender, but it's just falling apart, that's, it's overcooked too. Right. So, oh, just give it a little, about like 15 minutes, let it cook. Add in heavy whipping cream. About a cup. Mm, as much as you want. How heavy you want it? Yeah, <laughs> you want it. This is a this is a cup, like a cup and a quarter. Yeah. And if you don't want to use chicken bouillon, you can use chicken broth that's what we tell you guys every week well for the people who have been watching every week you can substitute chicken bouillon for who um chicken broth or you mm -hmm. can use seafood bouillon mm -hmm. to give it more seafood flavor we showed you how to make that yummy 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 seafood chowder so um i can't wait to eat it 
How about you? I know it's your fave, one of your favorites. So I can't wait. It's gonna be yummy, yummy, yummy. It's gonna have love in my tummy. Um, so you know, we still on that Chauvin trial. Oh we're yeah. Just do a little update. Everybody, you know, is aware of everything, but you know, we like to talk about stuff. So, um, Derek Chauvin refused to testify, and defense rested the case. We're gonna be moving on to uh, closing arguments on Monday. He know he a murderer, so he know he ain't nothing to talk about. Well, yeah, he, his Fifth Amendment. He just said for my Fifth Amendment rights. He wanted his Fifth Amendment rights, so. He decided to not speak and not testify against himself. So, right. so it is what it is, bro. Let's see how much you're going to get sentenced. But okay. a lot of defense teams say you might incriminate yourself, so they don't want you. What do you think about that? Like, I just think that I got to give myself an opportunity to speak for myself, right? Because if he really feels like he's innocent, he should say something, I believe. But yeah. he know he murdered him. So, so 10 to 20 miles away... Unfortunately, Dante Wright just was killed on this past Saturday. Was it Saturday? I don't know if it was Saturday, but I know it was earlier this week. Or Well, maybe it was Saturday. I don't know. I don't Unfortunate. Know 21, 20 years old. 20 years old. Just got a car for his birthday. His mom gave him a new car for his birthday. He was pulled over and got shot. Mom, the sad thing is he knew, like, he was so afraid of cops, like, probably a lot of young well, a lot of African-American people, period. Mm -hmm. He called his mom and let her know that he was getting pulled over. And um, it's sad that he had to call his mom. Like, he must have felt the vibe or something. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And he had a... What, they made him hang up the phone? Like, how, how did he get off the phone with his mom? She said the phone hung up and she tried to call back and nobody was picking up. And finally, the girl picked up and told her that he was shot. Told the mom that he had got shot. Oh, my God. How yeah. devastating is that? As yeah. a parent. It's beyond devastating. It's heartbroken. Yeah. And the cop that's been on the force for, like, over 25 years mm -hmm. said that she accidentally pulled out the wrong. She thought it was a taser gun instead of a gun. But anybody that's a gun owner or even been around, you, ha you have to take the safety off. It's more heavier. Mm -hmm. It's black. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was a ridiculous ex excuse. And we just found finding out recently that the gun is on your dominant side, which I'm right-handed. Gun goes here, taser goes here, and it's flipped the other way. So if even if you are left-handed and your taser is on this side, you pull it out, it's going to be backwards. So what, how are you going to shoot somebody? Yeah. That's impossible. So be. she would have to flip her hand this way or whatever to reach the taser in order to shoot him. So that is a lie. And there has been so many accidental shootings thinking that they had a taser so many times. And we're just now learning that the taser goes on the opposite side. I thought all the stuff, like, all that stuff was on this side. So yeah. how do you accidentally shoot somebody with a taser? And not only that, like you said, the weight is different. Right. The color is different. Yep. Yeah. And you know when you're holding it, if it's a gun or not. Yeah. So, and she resigned, thank God, but... And thank God she went to jail. So I hope yeah. that she gets what she deserves, just like any other criminal who murders somebody. Yeah. She's been on the force for 26 years. 26 years. Like, at... We were talking about, like, should she get fired for making a mistake? Yes, definitely. First, we know it wasn't a mistake, but right. she definitely should get fired because at your job, if you do something wrong, you're going to get fired. Right. Something. So just like when, you know, you're, you work for, with children, right. what happens like if something, you know, with, with kids at your school? Right. Um, any abuse, first of all, you're going to get fired with a child. Mm -hmm. And then I know example of like just working in preschool for over the years, like some children are active and if they get out the gate or if the teacher don't see the child and leave a room, automatic, you get automatically fired. Right. Because these children are trusted in our hands. Just as, as a cop, you should, they yeah. shouldn't trust people in their hands or you're serving the community. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to, don't kill the community, serve the community. <laughs> Protect and serve. Right. Protect and serve. 
That is what you're here for. We understand that your jobs are dangerous. We appreciate police officers. Right. We don't want you to go away. We want police officers. We understand that there is a need for them. But we want to be safe in your hands. For real. And it's sad that as African-American people, you get pulled over. You don't know. you scared to do anything. Just like in Virginia, uh, Army lieutenant, right? Mm -hmm. a, a Army lieutenant was pulled over by a cop. What was the purpose of him getting pulled over? I don't even know. I don't even know. Oh, it was a, just a... They try to say that he was trespassing or something. Like he was loitering oh. or trespassing or something. I never even knew that situation, what exactly happened. But he got pulled over. And they're like, get out the car. They both had their guns on him. And he was scared to move. Like, he felt like he had his hands out the window. He felt like if he took off his seatbelt, they could say, oh, he's reaching for a gun. Mm -hmm. So he, it wasn't like he wasn't, what do everybody say, due to the cops? You supposed comply. to go, comply with the cops. It wasn't like he wasn't complying. He was scared to move. Like, mm -hmm. he just had his hands out. Like, what, what did I do? What did I do? And when he found out that he was a lieutenant, he should have showed him a little bit more respect. He maced him. To me, yes. Maced him. And he's like, that's messed up. That Well, he didn't say messed He said, that's messed up. That's messed up. Holding his hands and he's trying to get out the car. Take off your seatbelt. I don't even want to take off my right. seatbelt. I wouldn't either. It's ridiculous. Sad. Like this. And they say, comply. Yeah. They say, comply. All you got to do is comply and you won't be shot. You won't be maced. You won't get killed. Just comply. Black people don't comply. Well, well, what happened in Minnesota again? 61 year old white man crashed into two police officers' cars, one hanging on to the car. Oh, I've seen it. Trying to, he tried to reach <laughs> into the car, and the man just pulled speed off high speed, pull off, and the man, the cop hanging on to the car, he hit him in the head with a hammer. He just dragging the man down the street. And guess what? No shots fired. Was there any mace? No mace. Taser? Action. No taser. <laughs> no nothing. They didn't want to shoot the man's tires out. Wow. That's ridiculous. So comply, comply, comply. Comply. Comply doesn't always work. It's not. They just want mm -hmm. black and browns to comply. White people could do what they want to do and survive. He's in jail. The cop is in the hospital. That's all we want is equality. We don't want anything, anybody to be treated any better than anybody else. We just want everybody to go home just like everybody else, or go to jail. Right. Either way, we want to live to see another day. That's all. We're asking for, equal, asking for equality. Nothing else. Nothing. Nothing else. We want to be treated the exact same way. All three incidents occurred that we just talked about occurred. Well, I'm sorry, with the exception of the Virginia one. George Floyd, uh, Dante Wright, and this older white man, I don't know what his name is, all occurred in Minnesota, and two dead, one alive. Wow. Why do you think we feel the way that we feel? So we just want equality. There's just like a lot of things that's going on with Asians right now because of COVID, they've been blamed. We want the same empathy and sympathy or whatever it is, compassion that you guys are giving to them. We want the same thing. We want the same respect. We want the same trust. Whatever it is that you're giving them, we want the same thing. That's all. That's it. We definitely empathize with the Asian community because fair is fair. Mm -hmm. Like, no one should get treated wrong for the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. So, we support Asian equality. Mm -hmm. And we want to get, get supported too. Yes, man. That's and it. the Latinos too. We we with y'all too. It's like the little boy that was got walking down the street. He was just crossed the border, but they they left him. Oh, that was heartbreaking. Yeah. So he, we trust, we empathize, we mm -hmm. feel for everybody. We're not just here like black people are the greatest and whatever. We want to just be treated equally, and we want. Human rights for all. That's it. Simple. Okay? Let's make this Cajun fish. <laughs> I am going to thicken up our soup a little bit. So as we've showed you before in other shows, just add a little water and some flour and add it to whatever it is that you're cooking to thicken it up. And we're going to stir it up. 
just to get it a little because it's a little bit too runny so just thicken it up it smells delicious okay i'm gonna keep continue to stir and while we're doing that tiff is gonna do the blackened fish. asian fish we seasoned the fish with a little taste of la cajun seasoning so we're gonna um I'm gonna use butter, real butter, not margin. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need a lot, it's a lot of fish. Yeah. So I'm putting the butter inside. Then when the butter melts a little, when it melts, fish fillets so talking about cops again and updates we have an update um jacob blake's cop well not his cop but the cop that shot him has gone back to work on the force and he's not gonna be disciplined so um that's that, that that's an update there you go how do you feel? I, just, I don't, you know how I feel. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right at all. I think that there should have been some kind of discipline. Right. Something. Something. They can't always say that they're in fear, fear for their lives. They thought I was reaching for a gun. They thought this, they thought that. They can't continue to say that. Like, we as a black community have to, like, unfortunately, kneel on these politicians' necks and have them enforce laws and get certain cops out, like reform. We need reform. We need reform. That's all it is to it because without reform, it's going to continue to happen. What if we can't just march up and down the street hoping and praying that things will change? Yeah. Yeah. We all the, go ahead. Sorry. No, we definitely need to vote, go, well, vote yeah. and leave learn about these politicians and people running mm -hmm. don't just vote just for anybody do your research mm -hmm. yes and not just not just for a presidency it starts with your local officers yeah local, your local politicians local is very important it, and it also includes um school board School superintendents, right. you vote for that too. So you have to be cognizant of what is going on in your community. Right. You can't just like, oh, I don't really know. I don't really know, so I, I shouldn't go vote. Don't ignorance is not an excuse. Exactly. If the internet is, there, there's no reason. Google can teach you anything. Google, you can find anything on Google. So there's no reason for you to be ignorant to anything. Propositions, politicians, anything you can do research all it takes is a little bit of reading that's it you don't even have to read for hours just a little bit of reading and you can get pretty much anything that you need okay just like you on instagram or whatever social media site that you on it j takes a little bit of googling okay let's get these people out of office who don't care about us stop letting them make promises to us that they're not going to keep we can't just vote for a party. We have to vote for what's right. It's that simple. So look at this delicious fish. So we're going to start our shrimp for our garlic shrimp mashed potatoes. We already cooked the potatoes. You saw that earlier in the video. So I added some butter to the hot pan, I'm just burning my hand right now. And I'm gonna add the shrimp. Okay, and we're gonna leave all that water on there because we need all that to make salt, okay? Put all that on there. And since we're talking about, I'm not talking about, we ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> since we are Cooking all this seafood, we're gonna talk about Manhattan Beach. There was a family 
in the early 1900s, uh -huh. a black family uh, who owned land on uh, under it was it wasn't even developed yet, uh, Manhattan Beach, and um, it was a it different was, name, right? Was it a different name? I just know that it was it wasn't developed. Uh -huh. at the time oh. and they had a resort this was like one of the first and only places where black people could go sunbathe and go swimming on the in the ocean and like on a real resort like it was a real thing for black people mm -hmm. so um the city decided that they wanted to turn what their the part of that uh sorry the land that they had along with some other land turn it into a state park or the state, I don't know if it was the state or the city, whatever it was, but they wanted to turn it into a state park and they took their land away from them. So now here we are in 2021 and they are giving the descendants of that land their property back, which is now worth 70, what million? 70? Seventy-two million. Seventy-two million dollars. Wow. So they get their. I don't know how it was discovered that you know it was some racial stuff that was going on why they took their property because it was like years after they took the property from them that they finally turned it into a, a park. Ready? But we have our shrimp right here. We're gonna pour this all over this. What's the other spoon? Shrimp, 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 ready, ready. Garlicky. Garlicky. Mmm. Like, like a restaurant. That, um, no, that restaurant, they use lobster. They use lobster. Lobster. So we gonna, we mashed using potatoes. shrimp. We're using shrimp mashed potatoes. And adding our shrimp to our mashed potatoes. This is gonna be so amazing. Delicious. So amazing. So, did you hear about um, Kobe's getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, the NBA Hall of Fame? Oh, okay. And Go Kobe. Guess who is presenting him? Um, rest in peace, Kobe. Go Kobe. Mm -hmm. um, who? <laughs> the other, the other goat. It's only two. Well, well, there's more than two, but LeBron. Really? <laughs> Jordan. Okay. 23 presenting 24. Oh, that's dope. Welcome, Welcome to Q&A &A with Tiff and Nick. Let's get it started. We're doing our Brussels sprouts. We added bacon. We're letting it sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the first question. <laughs> the first question is, what would you rather have, a BBL or $50,000 worth of land? Definitely fifty thousand dollars worth of land, land, property. That's money that's gonna keep coming. Brazilian butt lift. And my swap. No. <laughs> I, I, first of all, that's I don't know. Uh, um, where are we getting this land? Fifty thousand. It definitely ain't gonna be in California because you're gonna get a. A toes worth of land in California. I'll take it. But I will take the land as well. I don't think we need butt lifts, to be honest. So I'll take that land. I, mean, I want to get might, my money. We might need it, but we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> take the land. What's more important, personal legacy or family? Family. Definitely family. Family will always be there for you. You could be a legend and do one thing wrong, the internet will eat you up. Eat you. But your family, most times, they're there for you thick and thin. Yeah, I agree with everything Tiff said. Are men wrong for wanting sex to be a requirement within the first few days? They, they just met them? At the first few dates. I mean. Oh, first few dates? Yeah. So, how many, well. One, let's say, how many dates do you think? And two. I mean, I just, I don't know about that. Question. I don't think it's a number, necessarily a number to but it. If, if somebody is requiring you to do anything at any stage, I think it's a problem. Yeah. And then just based off of your beliefs, 
I met a, I know people who've done it the first night and been happily ever married for years. I know somebody who did it. Who's dying? <laughs> Waited and got divorced. So, just depends on your life. Your life, your life, your life, your life. Duck in one time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you beating up a bunch of little kids to defend your own? No. I'm not fucking with no little kids. Wait, like my kid getting jumped? <laughs> Describe different scenarios. Like, if my kid is getting jumped with a whole bunch of little kids, I mean, you can sling them, but you ain't about to beat, like, just be out there, pow, 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 like, you gonna do grown people? You about to beat up some kids like that? No, Tiffany. I love my kids. <laughs> I love mine, too, but I am not about to go fight no little kids. Like if it's that. a whole bunch of them, that's... You sling them. Yeah, I'm gonna sling them. I'm gonna sling them and bang them. I'm gonna sling one and bang them. Yeah, yeah, but you're not gonna punch them and stomp them. You gonna punch them and stomp them? I won't do the Kurt Franklin, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't, but I'm going to help my babies. Of course you're going to. I'm definitely going to. Trust me. Germany had some some issues where I wanted to go to that school. Off of one kid. So I already know if she getting jumped, what's going to happen. Right. I'm just saying you ain't about to just be punching, like, out there fighting back to back. Like, no, you just grab them off of them. I just want to get my baby to safety. That's all. If you if you accidentally bruise something, well, I hold them back. I hold them and tell my child, get them, get them now. No, this one. Add in Brussels sprouts, guys, and season it with pepper. Sorry. Season it with pepper, garlic. And not too much salt, just a little bit of salt because the bacon has salt, the bacon fat. So, here we go. Okay, next question. Q&A. Is a relationship with too many rules sustainable? Ooh. Yes. Ooh. No, I mean, no, it's not sustainable. Like, rules, like... Yeah, you... Like, what type of rules, like... Let me drink on that. I'm confused. Like we need any rules. type of relationship. If you have a friendship and you give your friend rules, you have a marriage and you have rules. If you have like maybe that word rule is like throwing me off. Like we ain't at school. You gotta follow the rules. I don't think it's the same though because somebody is being controlling. Uh -huh. Definitely. Too much control in any relationship will not last. Because nobody wants to feel like they're being policed. And bullied. And bullied, yeah. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Did you see that lady who grew out her nails for 28 years talking about she want to do house chores now? Who the hell is doing her chores? <laughs> <laughs> who's, her, who's doing her chores for 28 years? I don't know. But when they cut them off, she had to go to the doctor and they had to saw them off and they were still about like that they long. Were, I seen they were still long. They were thick. She's thick. Do you think she'd be drinking a lot of milk or something? <laughs> <laughs> I've been growing mine for 40 years. And it, <laughs> they just will not do nothing. <laughs> they just keep falling, they keep cracking on the sides. I don't know what she did. I'm going to have to call her. And... She donated the nails to um, the museum. The museum, yeah. yeah. Believe it, Ripley's. Believe it or not. Oh, the one we went to. When did we go there? Ripley's. Believe it or not. A oh, while ago. Oh, remember? Oh, yeah, we did go in Orlando. Yeah. Slow. They Ripley's donated to that one. Donated to. Yeah. <laughs> so she went, showed up, and saw her long nails. They was how many feet? I don't know, but it was gross. But she said it was so much pain on her hands to have those nails that long. I could imagine, like, how does she do every... I know the biggest question everybody would ask. How do you wipe, yo? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. She got doodle under her nails. <laughs> Rich has got doodle here. And if you seen a lady like that, would you eat at her house? Hell no. She can't do no chores. What you think she got? She gonna clean something. 
clean your food. She can't wipe her booty or. Mm -mm. Hey, that's deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brussels sprouts and bacon is done. Now we're gonna sprinkle on some Parmesan cheese. All over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just sprinkle some more. And drizzle on that balsamic vinaigrette glaze. Fire. We are all done. Everything looks so delicious. Can't wait to eat this good food. We have our seafood chowder. We have crab legs, king crab legs, steamed. We have our Brussels sprouts, sauteed with bacon, and that's uh, Parmesan cheese and balsamic vinaigrette um, glaze. Our garlic shrimp mashed potatoes and our Cajun, um, Cajun blackened cabbage. So, this week we have something special for you guys. <laughs> we are doing a giveaway. Yes. Okay, we have here made by undersc underscore worth the weight. We have a Mother's Day basket. Okay? And we are giving this away to you for free as long as you follow, like our videos, like our YouTube page, tag us in your reposts. We'll give, we will give you all the rules in a different video. One person will win. And we appreciate all the support that we have been given. You're going to have to tag us at Cooking and Combos and underscore worth the wait. Okay? Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. But wait. this is oh. such good stuff. We have smaller baskets. She's going to be selling these for Mother's Day. This is a large basket. And she also has two or three more but we'll we'll let you know in a different video okay yes and look how beautiful this is for the moms out there fearless strong mothers with the beautiful animal print that's right like and share and we have our cajun seasonings available to to purchase get your cajun sauce all righty Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching Cooking in Combos with Tiff and Nick. Hey. hey! See you next week. <laughs>